This video is about web scraping. Web scraping refers to the ability of our Python program or any program to view a web page like this one, National Weather Service, or this one, the New York Times, and extract useful information from the page. Now, web pages, of course, are usually designed for our eyes. We uh, are viewing the page, you know, using this display that's provided by the browser, and it includes images and other text besides the text that we might be interested in looking at. But when we scrape a page with our Python program, we're not going to be looking at this. We're going to be looking at the underlying code that sits beneath most web pages. And this underlying code is called HTML. We can view the HTML of any page uh, usually by right-clicking within the page and choosing View Page Source. You should be able to do this uh, with Chrome or Firefox and hopefully with others as well. You do have to make sure not to be right-clicking an image or some other media. It needs to be within the page itself. Usually it's best to just click away from any, uh, any elements in the page and you can choose View Page Source to see the underlying HTML. This is the underlying code that's beneath most web pages. I'm sure most of you have seen it, but even if you haven't, it's simple enough to understand. The browser actually downloads this code, which is all text, and it interprets this code and turns it into a page that we can look at. That's the, one of the main functions of a browser, is to take that HTML and then display it according to the code that it finds. Our program, when we use Python to download um, a, a web page, we're, of course, not going to be viewing it. We're just going to be looking at the HTML. So here we have in 3.1, I just put URL in here. And I'm going to use um, response.txt to view the HTML. This is the same URL as the, uh, the, the weather page that I showed you just before. I'm going to run this page. And I'm going to see the HTML that came out. This is the same HTML that I might uh, have seen in uh, the, uh, the weather service page when I did the view source. It's the very same thing. In fact, you could compare the beginning of this to the downloaded text here, and you'll see it's the same. In other words, as we described in the last section, we're using the requests library and a URL to download the HTML. Once we've got that HTML, we can then proceed to scrape it. And we're going to use a module called Beautiful Soup. I'll give you a very simple example before we delve into um, the uh, structure of a web page. We use the module BS4, and we are going to take the text and we're going to pass it to uh, an object called Beautiful Soup, a Beautiful Soup object. We're going to pass it the text of our response, and we're going to tell it how to parse the text. What we get back from that is an object that I'll call a soup object. It's a beautiful soup object. And we can then uh, retrieve tags from the beautiful soup object using a method called find. For example, maybe I'm interested in the title tag of um, my web page. I can easily pull the tag and print it using beautiful soup. And um, I've just got a simple problem here. Oh, I didn't close my string when I said HTML parser. And here we see the tag having been extracted from the web page. So we're going to be able to go from a complex page that has lots and lots of tags in it. We're going to be able to identify the tags that we'd like. And then we're going to be able to use Beautiful Soup to extract the tags and the information within the tags. Before we go any further, though, let's take a look at a simple web page and let's discuss the structure of HTML. We're not going to need to learn everything about HTML, and you're not going to need to take a separate course in HTML to understand what we need for scraping. It will be helpful eventually for you to get a basic understanding of HTML and uh, the different tags that are involved, but really we can learn what we need in just a few minutes. 
We basically want to understand that a web page consists of tags that are nested within other tags. Tags can be container tags that have open and closed tags. Here you can see the title tag in this simple web page, uh, dormouse.html, has an open and a closed tag. The open tag looks like this, and the closed tag looks like this. It's the same name of the open tag, but it has a slash in front of the close. You can see that some tags can contain other tags. And you can also see that some tags actually don't contain anything. They may just be a tag that has some what we call parameters. In fact, let's look at the structure of a tag. We can say that an HTML tag may contain up to three parts the name of the tag, the parameters in the tag, and the body of the tag, which we can sometimes call the text. If we look at a simplified page like Dormouse, we can see that these tags contain one or more of uh, those um, items. Uh, for instance, the title tag that we were looking at before, here's the name of it. You can see that every single tag that we look at has a name the HTML tag, the head tag, the title tag, the meta tag. This is how we identify the name of a tag. It's the first word that you see within the angle brackets of a tag. Whether the tag is a container or no, it will always have a name. The next is the parameters. Not every tag has parameters. These are the parameters within this meta tag. These are the parameters within this P tag. But you can see that tags like B and meta and title, I'm sorry, and B and title and head don't have parameters. The parameter syntax is as you see here. After the name, you'll see a space, and then you may see one or more key value pairs. And those key value pairs have a key and a value, and they are the parameters of the tag. As I say, these are optional within a tag. They may or may not be there. You can see that some of these have parameters and some don't. Finally, we have the body of the tag or the text of the tag. The body is what appears between the open and closed tags of a container tag. The container tag title has a body that consists of this text, the Dormouse story. But the body of a tag may also contain other tags. This P tag, for example, has a B tag within it, and the B tag has text within it. Now we can say that the entire uh, body of the P tag is everything between the open and closed tags. And this can get quite complex. For example, this head tag contains two other tags. This uh, body tag contains many tags. And this big HTML tag contains all of the tags within the text. So you can see that the nesting arrangement extends to the entire uh, structure of the, the uh, HTML and that the body of any given tag may be quite large. So again, the three parts of a tag are the name, which will always be there, the parameters, which may be there, and the body, which may be there. In other words, the parameters and the body are, are optional and the name will always be there. And again, we saw that the meta tag does not contain a body, but it does contain parameters, and that the B tag does not contain parameters, but it does contain a body. So armed with this knowledge, we'll now go to Beautiful Soup and see how it will allow us to both identify tags based on, let's say, parameters, and how to extract the body and the parameters from a tag. Let's go to, within our in-class exercises, um, let's go to, uh, I think it's 3.18. Uh, now for this, I'm not going to be using requests. Again, if we go to in-class 3.1, you'll see an example of me pulling the text and using Beautiful Soup to get the text out. And that is going to be the general uh, paradigm that we're going to use. You're going to want to be pulling data from the internet. You can save it if you want. You could save this text if you want. 
by writing it to a text file. But usually the, the paradigm is to uh, use requests to get the data from the, um, from the uh, internet and then to use the text attribute of the response object to uh, pass the text to beautiful soup, get back a soup object. However, if you go to 318, you can see that what we're doing is we're simply opening and reading a file and then using that text in beautiful soup. So whether you use requests to get text from the internet or whether you're getting text from a file, the process is the same. We're going to pass the text to the beautiful soup object and get back uh, a soup object that we're then going to be able to query. I don't know if you noticed that in our earlier example, I said import BS4 and then BS4.beautifulsoup. Here I'm using the other form of import, which is to say from BS4, import beautiful soup, and then just use beautiful soup as an object. Whether you use the initial approach that I did, which was to say import BS4 and then BS4.beautifulsoup, or whether you choose to import Beautiful Soup from BS4 and then use it directly is up to you. It's mostly just about names and semantics. It won't affect uh, the outcome of what you're doing. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and forth between the HTML that we can read as text and the text, the um, program that we're writing to extract that text. And again, don't forget, when we're working with a much larger page, the approach will be the same. We can do searches within the page to try to find things within the page, and then we can identify tags that way, or we can, um, uh, 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 you know, or we can, let's say, save a page and uh, use that page as our reference to examine and uh, determine what we want to ex extract from that page. However you do it is up to you. Again, you can pull down a page off the internet, save it to text, and then open it up in a reader like, uh, like Sublime or, or, or PyCharm. Or you can just read it directly from the browser. It's really up to you. For this demonstration, I'm going to use a saved file because it's much simpler to work with. So let's begin to extract using Beautiful Soup. Again, I'm going to toggle back and forth between my 318, which has uh, uh, opened the uh, Dormouse file and uh, pulled it into a soup object, and my Dormouse.html, which has the text of what I'm scraping. Let's do some identification of tags and, from, and some scraping of tags. I do want to mention that when we're working within um, uh, any, any web page, it's possible that we may need to specify the encoding of the page. When you're pulling down off the internet, we don't know what we're going to get. And so it's possible that when you open a page that was saved from the internet, you may need to specify an encoding. Usually when we do that with requests, we don't need to think too much about that because the, uh, the dot text attribute usually attempts to uh, specify the encoding and figure out uh, what encoding to use. But we're doing that here uh, because uh, when you're opening a text file, that may be necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this. I'm going to take this line out and put it down here. And I'm going to say dot read here. And this is me just opening a file and um, opening it with proper encoding and then pulling it into a soup object. I'm just going to show that that works. Okay, Dormouse could not be found because I'm not specifying it correctly. I think I need to say dot dot slash. And it looks like it works. So now let's begin scraping. We have a file like this one. It contains tags with information that we want. Let's say we'd like, again, to uh, look at the title tag. And we would like to get the text of the title tag. The way we're going to do that is we're going to use uh, a, uh, the, the method of the soup object called find. And we're going to specify the name of the tag that we want. 
Now, for tags that are unique and all HTML tags, uh, all HTML pages, I believe, will only contain one title tag, then we can specify with soup.find the name of the tag. Now, we can print the tag, but really, this tag is not text. It sort of seems like it is, because if we print the tag, we're going to see uh, the whole tag printed out as if it were text, but it's actually not. If we use a type on the tag, we're going to see that it's actually a special object called a tag object. This is not uh, text. This is not um, uh, 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 this is not uh, a string. This is actually a special tag called a title tag. Now, what's a title tag? It's a special object. It's a tag object. What's a tag object? It's an object that's going to give us access to the contents of the tag. So let's work with this title tag. And let's do the first thing that we'd like to do, which is to pull out the text, uh, the body of the tag. So we're going to say uh, title text equals title tag dot text. When we print the title text, we're going to see the contents of that tag. And there it is, the Dormouse's story. We can verify that by looking back at the tag and see that that is indeed the body or the text of the tag. Dot text. So once we have used find to get a tag, we can learn all sorts of things about the tag by uh, using attributes of the tag. For example, we could get the name of the tag quite easily by using the name attribute. Now, we wouldn't normally need that, although sometimes we would, uh, because normally when we're finding a tag, we're going to actually use the name. But it's just to show you that there's another attribute of the tag that's available called the name of the tag. Let's look again. Again, remember every tag has up to three parts, the name, the body or the text, and the parameters. Why don't we get the parameters next? But first, um, I want to talk about how we can identify a tag that might not be unique uh, or might not have a unique name. In our first example, we pulled the value, the tag, of a title tag uh, by using the title name. But the only reason we were able to do that successfully is because there's only one title tag. As you can see, though, there are multiple P tags. So how would we identify a tag that's not unique? We can't use find by itself with just the name because the name is not unique. If we did a find with the soup object and we asked for a p tag, we would get the very first p tag. And that can be very useful. But what if we wanted to get the second p tag? We're going to need to figure out how to uniquely identify this tag. We can do that by using, in part, we can do that by using the meta information. This is another way that we can identify a tag. So let me show you how we can do that. I'm going to go ahead and comment out this stuff just because it's not useful to us at the moment. And I'd like to try to find, let's say, uh, one of the story tags. Uh, I guess we could call this uh, just the regular story. So I'll call this uh, story P. I'm going to say soup.find. I'm going to specify a P tag. And now I'm going to specify the unique identifier of this tag. What I like to do sometimes, and I recommend that you do, is take the tag and put it right into a comment here so that I can see exactly what I'm going to get out of it. And I'd like to get the class story title tag. Normally when I do this, I'm going to want to make sure that this is unique because I might be uh, identifying and pulling uh, a tag that I'm not expecting. So I'll do a simple search within the file. I'll search for story title and then I'll see if there are any others. In this case, I see that there aren't. If I was to do this within the browser, it would be really, really be quite easy. Uh, let's say I'm going to look um, for a p tag within um, within uh, 
uh, this much more uh, uh, expansive HTML page. I see that this p tag has a class tag of this, but I'm doing a, p a search for a p tag. You can do a search within your HTML source from the browser, just as you can from any text editor. Now I just identified that this p tag uh, with a class story title is unique. And so I'm going to pull that one. Is that the one I'm pulling? Yeah, story title. Confident that I'm only going to be able to identify just one tag using this approach. And what would I like to pull from this tag? I'd like to pull the text of the tag. Now this text is interesting because it's actually inside the B tag within the P tag, but it's still going to be part of the P tags um, uh, text. So I'm going to go ahead and print story P, which is my tag. Why don't I call, just make that explicit? I'm going to say story P tag. And I'm going to ask for the text of that tag. Let's run this one. Okay, I get the Dormouse's story. Is that what I was looking for? Let's check it out. Yes. Well, why don't we do this with story instead? I'll call this story tag and I'll say class story and let's see if we can get good text out of that because that text was a little too close to the last thing we had. Okay, interesting. So we actually get quite a lot of text here and we get this lovely story with a very unhappy ending, which um, I created myself. Oh wait, that's, oh, that's, we don't see the whole story just yet. Okay, so this is of class story, and uh, we're seeing here that we've got the text of class story. Let's take a look and see what's there. Okay, interesting. There's actually quite a lot going on with this p tag, but you do see, I hope, that this p tag begins here and ends here, and what the te dot text um, uh, uh, attribute gets for us is actually all the text that can be found within the tag. And actually, you can see, and even if it's included in other tags, that text is, is, uh, is extractable. And maybe we can see now why uh, when we look at the p tag and its text and the output of the text attribute, we can see why it's formatted so strangely. It's because there was a bunch of extra space in there that was included within the tag. Now, actually, this brings up a really important point with this example, and that is that our p tag um, with class story is actually not unique. Do you see how there are multiple tags with class story? It's true that class story title was unique, and that's all very well. But in this case, it looks like the paragraphs of the story tags are actually included in multiple tags, multiple p tags with an attribute of class story. So let's look at how we could pull more than one tag um, if we have uh, class story. We're actually going to use. Um, another method of the soup object called find all. And find all will allow us to pull multiple story tags from the HTML. This is assuming that the criteria that we're using in find all will get us back more than one tag. Find all goes through the entire HTML source, and even if it finds a tag with this criteria, that is name of p and parameters of class and store class equals story. And now it looks like we should update our comment here since we've got classes story. Find all will retrieve multiple tags, and we can actually pull down a list of these and say for tag in story tags. And let's pull the text of each one of these. So here we're looping through the tags that are retrieved from find all or retrieved with find all from the HTML page. And we're pulling in multiple tags that match this criteria. And we're looking at the text of each one. Let's take a look. OK, now we get the entire story. Once upon a time, there were three little sisters. The names were Elsie, Lacey, and Tilly, and they lived at the bottom of the well. And this is an ending that I added. They were happy and eventually died the end. As a famous Hollywood writer said to uh, Louis B. Mayer, uh, Mr. Mayer, there have been billions and billions of human stories on this earth, and not one of them had a happy ending. 
And they, uh, they, she argued this when he was saying, I want my movie to happen. I have a happy ending. Okay, this story does not have a happy ending. I'm sorry. Um, but it does illustrate how we're able to pull multiple tags that have the same criteria because a lot of times in web pages, we find that this is the case. We may have multiple pages that look exactly the same and we're interested in all of them. We can use find all for that purpose. Now, the last thing that I'd like to show you is how we can extract other information from a tag. As we mentioned, there are three parts to every tag, the name, the parameters, and the text or the body. And we also said actually that it's not true that that's three parts to every tag. Every tag will have a name, but the tag may or may not have parameters and body. Sometimes we use the parameters to identify a tag which we could do with, let's say we did with the P tags. We had P class of story title. We had P class of story. But sometimes the uh, parameters actually contain information that we want. For example, what if our purpose was to identify and pull the meta information that contains a timestamp? Here's the name of the meta tag meta, and here are the parameters that may identify the tag. But actually, we find that parameters may identify a tag, but parameters may also actually contain data that we'd like to extract. In fact, with this meta tag, we see that the parameter name can help identify the meta tag but the parameter value may actually be a value that we want. In this case, the timestamp that was added to the HTML page. This meta tag is one of many that you may find in a web page that actually provides additional information about the tag. For example, in the New York Times website, you're going to find that uh, if we go to a particular article, let's say we go to um, a science article, we're going to find that there is information that we want from this that may be contained within p tags, but there's other information that may be contained within meta tags. For example, the title of a, a page may be in a meta tag. The uh, byline and the date may be contained within meta tags. What are meta tags? They're actually information about the page, and they can be used by web scrapers to identify the page, maybe to show um, what, what is in the article, who wrote it, when it was last updated. This meta information is usually designed for us to get out of a page so that we can identify information about the page. In this case, we have a timestamp meta tag that actually contains the timestamp, and we might be interested in pulling that out. So let's look at how to do that. We've pulled the paragraphs from this story, and that's beautiful. Let's get the timestamp tag. Again, we're going to use the same approach that we did with the other tags. We're going to use soup.find. I'm going to assume that there's only one timestamp tag, and I could do a search in there to find out. But I'm going to say uh, that my tag is a meta. And you know what? I'm going to do the same approach that I, I uh, recommend that you take. Take the tag, if it's short enough, and copy it right into your code so you can see it right in front of you as you're trying to scrape it. Because as I mentioned, we're going to be going back and forth between the HTML and the page, I mean, and the Python script. And it can be really helpful sometimes to just paste some of the uh, HTML page right in our uh, script. So we know that the name uh, of the tag is meta and that it has a parameter of name is timestamp. So we're going to use that to identify the, the uh, tag. And as I said, you know, there might be more than one. I'm going to guess there's only more than one, but I could easily do a search and find out. Or you could even do a find all and find out how many tags come out. Should we do that? Let's use find all and just see if multiple tags come out. I'm going to do an exit here just to make things easier. Okay, we get what we get back is a list of tags and there's only one. If I print the len of timestamp tag, I'm going to see that there's only one of them. Sure enough. Okay, so we know that it's unique and we could have done a search for that as well. But I'm going to use find now 
to pull my meta tag. And now, the last piece of information, we wanted to get this value attribute out of it. So how do we do that? Well, we can use a method called get. So I'm going to say uh, timestamp itself will be timestamp tag dot get. And then I'm going to say get me the value. In this way, it's very much like a dictionary. Another way to do it would have been to say uh, uh, timestamp tag subscript value. We could do that as well, but we might run into a key error if it's not there. Usually get is a lot better. And now if we print the timestamp, we'll see the result. And there's the timestamp. So what have we learned? We've learned first that all tags have three parts, the name, the parameters, and the text or body. We learned that in order to scrape a page, we're going to need to take the text of the page and pass it to beautiful soup with HTML parser as the attribute. And don't forget, I imported beautiful soup from BS4, but I could have done it the other way that I showed you earlier. Just say import BS4 and then BS4.beautifulsoup. Then what we get back from beautiful soup is a soup object, and the soup object will be used with find and find all to get tags that we want. We learned that we can use dot find with the name of the tag to get a particular tag and with parameters to identify a unique tag using its parameters. We learned that we can use find all to get multiple tags that match a certain criteria. Like there are multiple st class story P tags, so we can get back a list of such tags. We learned that we can use dot text on the tag to get the text from the tag, if there is any. And also that we can use dot get on the tag to um, get back uh, a parameter from the tag, like this value parameter from the tag. And so we learned that the parameters of a tag can be used to uniquely identify a tag or can be used to extract a valuable information from the tag. The last thing that I'll say is that this HTML page is something of a fractal. I mean, we know that these tags are nested one within the other within the other. I'll let you know that if we have a tag that contains other tags and we would like to do a kind of a sub search, we can do that. For example, let's take the body tag. As you can see, the body tag contains most of the rest of the, or let, no, let's say the head tag. The head tag contains most of the rest uh, I'm sorry, it contains a bunch of other tags within it, or the body tag contains most of the rest of the other tags within body. Because this is kind of a fractal, what we can do is we can say, let's say I wanted to get the head tag. So I'll say head tag equals soup dot find head. And that'll get me the head tag. That is, of course, going to be everything that you see here. But because this head tag contains other tags, I don't need to search the entire soup object if I don't want to. If I want to sort of drill down into a sub portion of the HTML, I can use a tag and use find and find all on the tag to look for another tag. In other words, this is going to work in exactly the same way, and I'm going to get the timestamp in the exactly same way because I'm searching for the meta tag within the head tag. Before, I was looking for the meta tag within the soup object, which basically means look for this meta tag within the entire page. And that's fine. That works great. But sometimes I might want to drill down first. I might want to get the head tag first and within it do a find for the meta tag or whatever sub tag I find within this overall tag. So this would be a way for us in a very complex HTML page to isolate a subsection of the page and then do searches within that page if we so wish. And that is the simple way that we can work with any scraped HTML page and scrape out information. 
The only way that this would not be useful to us is if the page is being loaded dynamically by JavaScript. You may know that HTML pages contain JavaScript and that that JavaScript can be run just as a program is run within the browser to dynamically uh, add to the page or display the page in a different way. And some HTML pages are designed to run their JavaScript and then download their information dynamically. For example, in a, 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 a New York Times article, I have found that the first image gets loaded automatically, but that subsequent images that you might see within the page don't get loaded right away. They get loaded later as you scroll, and that would be for obvious reasons. You don't want to load uh, an image into a page if it's not going to be viewed by the user. So what we do is we scroll through the page, and then dynamically the JavaScript loads a, uh, the image. What does that mean? It means that some pages that we're, we're uh, loading from our Python script, some pages will not contain all the text that you see in the browser. That text may be loaded dynamically, and that means that the, the text or images might not be available in the page. You can tell by looking at the source. Once you load the page, if you, uh, you know, the very first time you load it, if you do a, a show source, that's going to show you the source that your, usually will show you the source that your um, requests library and your Python script will see. But that may not be the whole story because, as I mentioned, sometimes as you scroll, more text and images get loaded, and those won't be available to our Python script. In those cases, you might need to use a different library like um, the um, like Selenium, which is another module for Python that uh, sort of works through your browser and can work with uh, your browser to download and uh, analyze a page. So. That is how we scrape. It's extremely powerful, and I certainly hope you enjoy it.